Okay, so uh, let's see. This is in the section Free Spirits. It's uh, um, what, paragraph number 26 on page 27, right at the top there. Every choice human, uh, excuse me, every choice human being strives instinctively for a citadel and secrecy where he is rescued from the crowds, the many, the vast majority, where as the exception, he can forget the human norm. The only, uh, the only exception is when he is driven straight towards this norm by an even stronger instinct in search of knowledge in the great and exceptional sense. So, the, 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 the rare and exceptional, the choice and exceptional man wants, to be, wants that secret citadel where he can forget the norm, where I can like cast off what, the, what, what humans think I should be and I can be me, right? And so the rare and exceptional man seeks to be set free from that. And the exception is the rare and exceptional man who is uh, even stronger and a greater exception, he's gonna head straight for the rule. He's gonna head straight for the norm. So let me see, I don't get this Nietzsche. The, the really, really cool guy wants to be free from the norm, but the really, really, really cool guy wants to head straight forward? Shut up, right? What does this mean? I think that we have to understand that the norm man, the rule man, the, that, that category in two senses. So when I am set free from the norm man, it's not just for a moment because I reestablish the bar for what it means to be a man, right? Such that if I'm that really, 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 really cool guy that he says here, the rare and exceptional and the rare and exceptional of the rare and exceptional, then I reestablish the rule. I am the one that recreates here was what a man can do. You want to know what the norm is for humans? Look at me. And I, I'm, you know, I'm just taking up this position here. But, but that's the kind of thing that he means. So what I like about this is, and what I want to underscore, is that this rare and exceptional human and the rare and exceptional of them has not forgotten about his brethren. Sorry, we're talking about men uh, here. But the rare and exceptional human in this sense uh, has not forgotten about his fellow humans or her fellow humans. What I mean is that to reestablish the norm, to head straight for it, to reestablish it, is to raise the bar. So what's an example of this? I mean, this is to find examples that are rare and exceptional of the rare and exceptional of the rare and exceptional are rare and exceptional. So we'll talk about rare and exceptional individuals, like Martin Luther King Jr., Right? He, he did not allow himself to be defined by the norm. He did not allow himself to be redefined or defined or limited by what men think. But he also raised the bar such that if men think that way still, they think backwards. Right? right? They're, they're like, that's dumb. You know, men think that, that, that blacks are whatever because of their skin or whatever. That's old and silly and dumb. He's raised the bar, right? He was, he's like, I'm not living that way. I'm not that way. And here's the new way. And anyone who doesn't rise up to that has fallen behind. You know? And so, unlike other rare and exceptional human beings who seek to cast off that norm and then turn around and lay waste to their fellow humans. That doesn't raise the bar. Right? And, and anyone who's got the will can, can kill. Only the rare can change what humanity needs. So this is what I think he means. And that, you know, whatever, with, that's 
that bar that we have been given is not one that is supposed to be one where we stop. It is not, I mean, not like we could. I mean, it's not like, oh, black and white thing, that issue's finished, thank goodness. You know, it'll always be tending to be finished, but perhaps we have to throw other things out too and raise the bar further. Is gender as silly as black and white? Are borders and languages just stupid distinctions between humans? Let's raise that bar. Uh, let's see here. Okay, just a couple, two, three more points and then I'll be done with this stuff. Um, uh, one of my favorite expressions, and this translation doesn't have it, but uh, malodorous books, books that stink. Uh, this is in section 30. Uh, Nietzsche talks about this, malodorous books, um, books that are for everybody, right? If you're, if you're reading a book that's for everybody, it's aimed at everyone. You will learn nothing new about yourself. And so why are you wasting your time? Right? So the only kind of book that is worth a damn is the one that makes you go, what the hell is going on here? All of the others are malodorous. They stink. Why do they stink? They got the, the smell of everybody on them. So, you know, just another happy little dismissal of everyone. Um, a critique of being moral, again, in thir uh, section 32, overcoming morality, not being merely moral, right? Because that just puts us in a box. Uh, and then he asked this, what about independence? Can you be independent? I mean, you ask an American, this is like, all of that and chips. But, you know, no, we're not. Do not cling on to the things that are close to you that you use to define yourself. I'm asking, who are you? I'm not asking, how are you related to things around you? Okay? So, cleave not. This is how I say I run it. It's like, in cleave meaning hang on to, hold tightly. Don't hold tightly to your country. Don't hold tightly to your God. Don't hold tightly to your parents, to your brothers and sisters, to your job, to your work, to your home, to your family. Cleave not to any of them and then tell me this. Who are you? I'm not asking, well, you say you're a brother. I'm a brother. But that means that's your relation to other people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a philosopher, a philosophy teacher, but that's the work I do. Who am I? Uh, American. That's your country. Who are you? Right? So let's take a look at this, this, this uh, passage here. Um, it's a uh, uh, thing, 41, cha uh, not chapter, section 41. Um, it's on page 39, right at the top there. We have to test ourselves to see whether we are uh, destined for independence and command, and we have to do it at the right time. We should not sidestep our tests, even though they may well be the most dangerous game we can play, and in the last analysis, can be witnessed by no judge other than ourselves. Not to, not to be stuck to any person, not even somebody we uh, love best. Every person uh, is a, and so every person is a, pr a prison. Uh, not just stuck by homeland. Uh, not stuck, again, he just goes on and on uh, with the things like I was referring to. Don't stick yourself to, don't cling to, don't cleave to. Um, and then, then answer me this question. Who are you? And actually, don't answer me. Answer yourself this question. Who am I? Right? So no lying. You can't lie. But you're going to lie to yourself. So are you all of that in the bag of chips? If not, 
If so, it doesn't matter. You're the one that gets the answer, right? So this is like about what? How am I living? What towards what am I living? And am I living according to a value that is not mine? And on this note, I just want to say another one of my favorite uh, Nietzsche expressions is hiding behind transcendentals, right? Hiding behind transcendentals. What's a transcendental? Well, any sort of value, uh, any, any sort of like institutional value. I'll give some examples to help flesh that out. Um, like uh, hiding behind the Bible, hiding behind the Constitution, hiding behind business, right? Uh, so putting some other value in front of yourself to take responsibility for yourself. Nietzsche says, don't do that, right? And you'll hear people say, you know, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the Bible says we have to do this. It's in the Bible, so this is, this is why we have to this, treat gays a certain way or whatever, right? That's, that's, that's to let something else take responsibility for you. That's like not being free. That's letting something else be free, and then you just hold that in front of yourself and say, meaner, meaner. It's, it, you rob yourself of any power and all responsibility. So somebody who says, yeah, we're allowed to have guns because the Constitution says is hiding behind the transcendental. Not the Bible this time, but the Constitution. It's like, oh, who's responsible for my guns? That thing. It says I can, so neener, neener. I'm allowed to, have, I'm allowed to be free in that way. There's the piece of document that says so. So I have given the power of my freedom to something that is not mine. I've given the responsibility of my freedom to something that is not mine, right? Not only do I also put myself in a little box and say, somebody else told me that this is what it meant to be free, but I don't even take responsibility for myself. The last example, and perhaps this is the best, and everyone can have this every once in a while. It's like a, almost like a magic card now, right? No more Dungeons and Dragons in the basements of, of, of places where darkly lit or whatever. You can use this magic card everywhere. It's called a business card. And if you got a business card, it's a magical get out of a, a moral relationship free card, right? Because you're able to play that whenever you don't want to treat somebody like a human being. I'm sorry. I'm going to play my business card. And the next thing that I do to you is not personal but business. I'm not doing it. Business is doing it. Yeah, I played my business card, so I'm no longer responsible for kicking you out of your house. Business is. You know, if I had to say, I'd do other things, but business is doing this. Right? How cowardly. How cowardly in every instance of it to give the power of your freedom and the responsibility of your action to something else. What would this person look like that lives according to these values? Uh, this is the last thing I'll take. So finally, you know, what, what's, what's life like in this dynamism of the present, and, you know, with, without this teleology telling us how to, that, that our values will come later on in life or whatever? What's the, the life of the will to power like? Well, Nietzsche says something like this uh, on, uh, let's see, what is it? Section or paragraph 43, what page is it? On page 40, the last sentence there. You know, he's talking about common good versus, uh, you know, the good for one. Common good is like, a, is, he says, is like a contradiction. Um, anything that's good for everybody is not, is not a good. Or it doesn't have that much value, whatever. So he goes on to say this. He says, in the end it is, it, it has to be as it is and has always been. Great things are for the great, abysses for the profound, delicacy and, trembly, and trembling for the subtle, and all in all, rare things are for the rare. So, like, happy life, but the end, in the end it is as it has to be. Uh, for those who wish to live outside of those, those boxes we've put ourselves in, 
there's abysses. There is there are great things and for those who wish to venture them, but there are there are there are shudderings and what else does he say? Um, trembling, delicacy, uh, uh, abysses. Not all happy. Not all happy. Yeah, but if you want to live just a life that's all happy, that's not life. You have to really occlude most of life to get there. So, you know, for Nietzsche, we've just sort of put ourselves in, we have given ourselves so many self limitations and put ourselves in so many boxes, all in the name of truth, that we have occluded human powers in advance. And we have said that we are incapable of things because of a truth that we know about ourselves. We don't even need to try. And, you know, Nietzsche, one, you know, where does Nietzsche stand on all of this? Again, I think what he wants us to do is sort of, everyone, anyone who can read Nietzsche, wake up. It may not be that we change the bar of humanity ourselves like some others have in the past, but rare and exceptional and rare and exceptional of the rare and exceptional are rare and exceptional. But it sure as hell means doesn't mean that I have to live a life that's not mine. And what is really mine? What is anything? Taking that sort of question puts us in a, in a position where at least good and evil seem to become problematized. And that's a liberation in the sense that before that, it just wasn't even a question. So I had my blinders on. So I don't know, Nietzsche, uh, a great liberator, tearing off the blinders, uh, you know, whatever we might say. There is, there is here freedom to be found and terror too.